Welcome, guys, to Unwritten Stories of Significance. I'm excited about my guests, and I'm always am, and I always start with that. But this one young lady I met through Instagram, and her artwork intrigued me. The way she painted, the history behind her work, the passion. She takes her paintbrush and she brings uniqueness to her artwork. With no further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Catherine Greenwood from British Columbia. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Joy. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure, hon. So finally, like, hello. <laughs> yeah, I'm finally, we're, I'm, ha I'm happy we're finally doing this. It feels really good. That's right, honey. With all the ups and downs we're going through right now, let's bring some beautiful inspiration with your gorgeous story and your stunning artwork to Unwritten Stories of Significance. So keeping our long story short, you know, I know you, but the viewers don't know you. So if you can just introduce yourself, my love, to the viewers, that would be awesome. Of course. Uh, my name is Catherine. Uh, I am a painter and visual artist. Uh, I currently live in Victoria in British Columbia. Uh, I recently graduated from OCAD, though, so I was living in Toronto um, studying art there. And uh, yeah, I'm a practicing artist. My art is uh, heavily influenced by nature. Um, I use a lot of imagery of nature in my paintings and a lot of color. All right, my love. Now, why did you choose OCAD to study? Like you live in BC full-time, correct? I do, yeah, I'm from Vancouver. Um, I chose OCAD, it feels like so long ago now when I was making the decision, but um, I actually did my first undergraduate degree in Halifax in Nova Scotia. Um, right. And a lot of the friends that I met over there were from Ontario, including my partner. So um, after I finished that program, uh, most people were moving to Toronto or somewhere in Ontario. And I kind of just followed along and um, I decided to go to art school in Toronto. Um, and yeah, never really looked back. Awesome. How did you enjoy attending OCAD? Um, I overall really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a really wonderful experience. There were definitely ups and downs. Uh, the pandemic kind of threw a wrench in everything for my final year. So it ended up working out really well for me. But um, yeah, it, it, it was a struggle. And, you know, there's always going to be difficult periods. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought OCAD was such a great experience for me. I learned a lot. It was really cool being at school there. <laughs> Beautiful, honey. Was it hard leaving Vancouver and then coming out to Ontario with the weather change and everything? How was that? Um, yeah, it was definitely difficult. I remember always thinking that winter would be over in like January because yeah. that's how it is out here. Right. So every January I'd get optimistic that spring was coming and then I'd realize that we had, you know, like three more months of winter. Um, but I got used to it and I, I really appreciate how like bright it is um, in the winter out yes. there in Ontario. Like there's a lot of sun, whereas here it's, uh, it's just really dark and gloomy for like the half of the year. So there definitely are um, plus and minuses on both sides. That's right. But you got those gorgeous mountains because I know what it's like. It is absolutely stunning. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I'm really in love with the landscape here and I'm happy to be um, here for the long term now. I really consider uh, BC to be home. Beautiful, honey. So mm -hmm. let's delve into your gorgeous story. What made you fall in love with art, nature? Oh, uh, wow, that's a good question. Um, Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, as for art, I don't know, it's just always kind of been something that I did. Um, not seriously, but um, I just enjoyed it. It was a hobby for me um, my whole life. I, I loved it as a kid. Um, and I guess I just thought that everyone loved it as a kid <laughs> because kids make a lot of art. It's a good activity for kids. Um, okay. But looking back, I think I really like gravitated to it a lot more than other people did. Um, and it really spoke to me. Um, so yeah, I just kind of continued to make art beyond being a kid. And um, throughout my first degree, I was studying psychology. So um, it was quite scientific 
um, and academic. And I was still drawing a lot and painting when I had time. And that kind of made me curious to pursue art in like a more formal way through art school, um, which I did. And I'm really happy I did make that decision because it was hard to, um, to decide to like go back to school again and commit to being an artist. Um, but that's what I am. <laughs> that's good. And you yeah. know the way I love the way you say that. I know the way you love to say that. That makes me sense. But I love the way you say that is because you say that with, with passion and with belief in what you do and you're comfortable in saying that. Yeah, it's taken me a little while to feel that way, but I do, yeah. Good for you, honey. So let's show our viewers a couple of this beautiful stuff. First is Bird of Paradise. Where did that derive from, my friend? Um, well, I usually for my titles, I try to tie them into the imagery that I'm using in the painting. So right. you may or may not recognize it, but there is kind of the, the uh, slight suggestion of a bird of paradise flower in that image. It's, um, it's blown up, so it's kind of on like a large scale. Um, and the whole point of the paintings is that they aren't immediately recognizable as plant matter. Um, but yeah, usually I, I put in the names of the, the plants that I'm working with in the image. Um, so that's kind of why I titled that one that. And I also just have a fascination with the bird of paradise flower. It's so beautiful and so unique and weird. Um, so yeah, I really wanted to incorporate that into my art. Beautiful, huh? Let's keep it rolling here. Bounty. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, this painting was a little bit less structured. The title Bounty kind of just came to me. I was thinking about um, just how much we can derive from nature, how much it offers us in terms of like food and um, exercise and fresh air and inspiration and everything really so it, that was kind of a testament to how much we can get from nature and how much it has to offer um, and that painting incorporates a lot of different imagery from a lot of different places um, and so it kind of seemed fitting to give it a title that encapsulated just like the bounty of things that nature has within it. That's why I could not explain I had to give it to you because all of your story hun, huh? because you explain it so so well before I introduce the next one mm -hmm. I gotta think about this for a second I want to make sense is that how long does it take you to paint how long does it put how long does it take you to put like a bounty together like your artwork how long um it's hard to say because I do it in um, in segments. So the first step is um, the background, which doesn't take too long because I try to kind of do it intuitively. Um, and then the second step I is actually digital. I plan it on my computer using Photoshop, and that can be the longest uh, the longest process because I'm very particular about my composition. So I play right. around with it and using like collage methods and. Um, that can take a long time to get it looking just right. And then painting it takes maybe a week if I'm painting wow. well. <laughs> Good for you, my love. Now, is it oil? Is it water? Like, is it canvas? Like, what, what, what is it that you're painting these beautiful? Yeah, I, I use oil paint. Um, I almost exclusively use oil paint. I really love it. Um, and I work on canvas. Right. Um, yeah, so I, my, my materials are pretty minimal, actually. Just paint, um, linseed oil, canvas. Yeah, keeping it uh, old school. Oh. Yeah. Do you keep your surroundings when you're painting? Because I watch a lot of movies with people that are painting. Is it, oh, is it quiet or do you have music playing in the background? Mm. Um, I usually have something playing in the background. Um, I will admit that I I watch Friends a lot when I paint. That's okay, that's um, okay. I watch Netflix when I'm studying. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, something about like having a TV show on really makes me yeah. able to just like get into the work for like hours on end and 
and like it really distracts me from how much time is passing but um sometimes it like numbs my brain if I'm doing it too much so then I'll listen to music or a podcast or nothing that's right hon that's right <laughs> Yeah. No, it's all normal. Trust me. I have my outlet too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong here, and I'm going to give this correct name. Quandara? Quandura? Quadra. Quadra. See? There you go. Quadra. Okay. Where did that come from? Because that is a really cool piece. Yeah, thank you. Um, so that piece is titled, um, it's kind of meant to be evocative of a certain place. So Quadra Island is somewhere where I spent some time working on a farm. Okay. Um, it's a really beautiful island um, on off the coast of central Vancouver Island. Um, so my partner and I went woofing there uh, a few summers ago during the pandemic and it was such a life-changing experience. Um, just learned so much about farming and kind of fell in love with that lifestyle. So the painting Quadra Cabbage is um, kind of just an ode to that. I wanted to acknowledge it because it was such a um, important time in my life that I felt like making a painting would be a really good way to like appreciate it and, um, and honor it, yeah. <laughs> All right, before we go to break, I wanna ask you this. What is your feedback um, when you present your work out there, like if it be on Instagram or if it be at shows, what has been the feedback from people looking at the work and the unique titles to them? Um, <clears throat> I think people are really drawn to them aesthetically. Um, I do try to make them look nice. Um, that's not all that I'm doing, but it's important. Um, so I think people are really drawn to the colors and the composition and the imagery. Um, people like looking at flowers and plants. Um, we know that, um, everyone is drawn to it. So I think there's something about that, about like the organic quality of the paintings. Um, but yeah, I think color is a big one and, um, I'm not really sure exactly what it is, but I guess I'm doing something right. <laughs> well, you must be doing something right, hon, because you're here on Unwritten Stories of Significance, Rogers Television, you are doing something right because your story is gonna inspire others that use their uniqueness and what they see in their eyes and put it to art. And on that note, we're gonna digress and go to break and we'll be right back guys, stay tuned. Welcome back to Unwritten Stories of Significance with Catherine Greenwood from Vancouver, British Columbia. Catherine, that was awesome, hon. Awesome. Your work is unique. It's, the only word is, is it's unique and it shows what Catherine Greenwood expresses. Off camera, we talked about what you would love to express in regards to your work. And when we thought of a title for it, we came up with Overcoming Plant Blindness through art. If you could break that down for the viewers from the lady behind her phenomenal work, that would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so plant blindness was kind of like the, the pillar concept behind my thesis body of work, which is what we've been looking at. Um, and uh, it's actually a psychological term um, to describe the tendency for humans to not pay attention to nature, to, um, to actively kind of ignore it um, compared to other species and to other stimuli. Um, and this is actually like a, a cognitive mechanism that has been measured through neuroscience. Um, so it's something that is inherent in our brains, um, which is really interesting because uh, to me, that kind of shows us that our behaviors and our attitudes towards nature and towards plants um, may be like influenced by uh, our neurological programming to have us not pay attention to these things that are very important, especially given the climate crisis that's going on right now. So that's the concept. Um, and my paintings, 
kind of attempt to bring awareness towards this um, by showing imagery of plants that is obscured, it's distorted, it's not necessarily recognizable at a first glance. And that's kind of intended to mimic the, the cognitive experience of being in nature and seeing these things, but not really paying attention to them and not really having them come into focus. Um, a lot of people might have experienced that when you know you go for a walk and you are aware that there's bushes and trees and shrubs surrounding you, but we, we don't really look at them. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to do through paint. Obviously, it's a it's a creative process, so I'm taking some artistic liberties, but that's my intention with the body of work. Wow, you see, I couldn't explain that. I couldn't. Not in a million years. I'm not in a million years. I've thought a lot about it. <laughs> Sorry, hon? Sorry? I've thought a lot about it. I've spent a lot well, of time. You have. That. You have. And that's why I wanted to have you in this segment express that. There was a couple of quotes that you did write. And I know this one we're going to show at the end of the show. But there was one that I want to read out and why you chose this one. Mm -hmm. It's called, it was stated here, the land is the real teacher. All we need as students is mindfulness. Robin Watt Kilmer. Mm -hmm. So why did you put that there in the email to myself? That I want to just bring it up. Why? Because it was that's pretty deep and pretty. Uh, it expresses everything that we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Robin Watt Kilmer is one of my favorite um, authors and uh, thinkers. Um, and I wanted to put that quote in there just because it kind of encapsulates like all of her work as an ethnobotanist. Um, and yeah, it really speaks to me how I, I think there's so many impulses for us to kind of like gain knowledge and be productive and um, become like developed people. But I think if we just pay more attention to nature, it can be so beneficial. Um, and that's really what the world is about, um, is connecting to our land and to our lifestyle. And um, yeah, the life cycles and interconnectedness of the world. Right. When you look at the conversations on television and stuff like that, and with just the life, the change of the planet, things like that, plants, animals, everything else around us, um, do you feel that we are bringing it more to the forefront from your perspective? Hmm. Um, I think we are. Um, I think the media has been starting to really grab onto these stories surrounding climate change. Um, right. And people are grasping how uh, important it is to wake up to this. Um, and I think that's a good thing, but um, I think it's very complicated and um, I think we could be responding to it better than we are now. Um, there's a lot of fear and grief and uh, anxiety around what's going on. Um, so yeah, I think that that could be mitigated a little bit if people were able to kind of ground themselves and I don't know, I, I can't speak for everyone, but I know for me, just like being outside can be such a good anecdote to like all of the the news that's going on right now right yeah wouldn't it be wouldn't it be good though if people just go for walks and experience nature because they always say the anxiety the stress level right now that we're dealing with when you say the opponents we lock inside our homes but if we were just to walk outside and walk in parks or just the nature how do you feel that can do to the mental mind yeah i think um it's absolutely beneficial. It works for me. I It works for, for most people, um, even if you don't like recognize it working. Um, but I think we should really be taking it a step further. And um, when we do go on walks, like being really curious about our environments and looking at things um, and paying attention to things and asking questions about what they are and why they're there and what purpose they serve. Um, I think that is going to take things a step further and create this sense of like community and uh, connectedness with our environment. That's the first step for like awareness and then 
valuing the natural world and that's going to lead to people taking more action I believe when you feel like you have a personal connection with um, the environment that's at risk wow wow so well spoken did you speak a lot at school like did you do any uh presentations at all um not really I'm actually quite shy you <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, no, you're doing awesome here, and I don't see a shy thing about you at all. Do you mind if I bring up two more of your pictures here, your paintings? Yeah, no, of course. All right. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. There is Butch, Bush Art. Am I saying that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Bush Art Orchid. Hmm. Blame that baby. Yeah. So that's a relatively new painting that I'm quite excited about. Um, it was taken, uh, sorry, the photo that I worked from, that was taken at Butcher Gardens, which is in Victoria where I live. Um, it's like a quite famous local, um, like ornamental garden. Um, mm -hmm. And I found this orchid that was just so gorgeous. Um, I was really drawn to it. Um, and so I took a photo of it and kind of used that as the main source material in that painting. Um, yeah. It just reminds me of like the spring when I went to visit the garden and um, just the the beauty of that flower and how like different it is and unique really inspires me. Wow, you could do a presentation just in a room with all of your artwork and just explain it because just the way you deliver the message and your passion is so soothing, mm. you know? No, very, very well, hon. Like, honestly, it's just calming. Silver ragwort. Mm, What's that yeah. baby there? Yes. Yeah. Um, so that painting is also relatively new, um, kind of expanding my process a little bit and trying to be a little more experimental. Um, now that I'm done my thesis, um, I'm able to kind of make paintings without having to stick to a certain... Um, like style um, so yeah I'm kind of breaking out of that a little bit and this painting silver ragwort is um, it's like done on a very macro scale so it's really kind of um, cropped and like zoomed into a very delicate part of this plant silver ragwort is what it's called Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of verges more on abstraction because of that like it's less identifiable as a plant I know people have looked at it and seen like capillaries like like the inside of a body um or kind right. of like maybe like water um so that's kind of cool I really like that kind of take on the imagery wow hun my god honestly like I my husband loves paintings like Sean loves them he loves them and I always said I a store and I look and I go can I keep on walking but he will stand there and he will just look and he will look and he'll see things different the way you see them. Mm. So it's just standing back and appreciating, like you're saying, through nature. Am I wrong? You're right. <laughs> awesome, hon. So yeah. I know you wanted, I know, did I cut you off? Did you want to say something? No. All right, hon. And I know that you wanted to share your next step. So mm. if you can share the viewers your next step, your next thought, your next platform with Catherine Greenwood. Yeah, um, so I have started a new body of work here and um, something that's really been kind of captivating me right now is the presence of like nature in the virtual realm. So for mm. example, like experiencing nature through virtual reality, through media, social media, film, um, all of these like outlets um, that happen not in the physical realm. And um, yeah, I've, I've been paying attention to that. And I think like viewers might agree that we do encounter like elements of nature a lot when we're online through like marketing. Like it's very, it's very common to have uh, like plants in um, like graphic design right now. Um, that's kind of like right. a trend. And so I'm just curious about these like new ways of encountering nature that are taken outside of the original context of like the outdoors and um, the effects that it might have on us. And I actually read a study recently showing that um, 
people who experience nature through a virtual reality had like the same benefits as someone who would actually went outside on a walk in the woods. So um, wow. I think it's really indicative of like the power of um, these digital alternatives to like physical nature experience. And it's pretty weird. <laughs> Well, it's weird, but wouldn't that, I don't want to get in because we don't really have much time, shoot, but wouldn't that be good right now with everybody being closed in that they can, you know what I mean? Wouldn't that be good for the mental mind? Like, Yeah, um, totally. I mean, it shows that it is good. Um, I think, I think it is good. Um, I think it's bizarre to me that this is a potential, uh, outlet for for be, for getting outside where you don't actually have to leave your house and you can go through it virtually um yeah I just think it's very interesting I don't think I can really say right now whether it's good or bad as it's something right. that's so new to our behavior but um it's something that I'm exploring with my new work and it's really exciting to me to be able to do that through art awesome hon well sweetie we've come to the end of our segment I just want to thank you so much. I finally got you on Unwritten Stories of Significance. You are a blessing and I love your work. I truly do. Thank you so yeah. much, Karen. Thanks so Bye. much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Oh, you're welcome. Likewise, honey. Bye. Bye. Bye, sweetheart.